Hello friends, this is Vikas here and welcome back to my channel and in the, this is the first video series of kit so let me start with the introduction of the kit so it's a devops tool used for source code management and it is free and open source version control system that is used to uh, handle small to very large project efficiently so uh, basically git is used to track changes in the source code like enabling multiple developer to work together on a non-linear development so let's start let's uh, before deep diving okay think of a scenario uh, with before git so uh, what was happening earlier like developer used to submit their code to the central server without having copies of their own means in the local repository after you have done the code you do not have anything so what was happening like any changes you have made to the source code uh, that was unknown to the other developer also and there was no communication between any of the developers right so what these all things has been taken care of when git came so now every developer has an entire copy of the code on their local system now and any changes anybody has made to the source code can be tracked by others that is done via commit id so commit id basically have a numeric alphanumeric number that has been appended to the each uh, changes we do to the code and there is a regular com communication between the developers so what is git now so it's a version control system used for tracking changes in your computer files and it is generally used for source code management and software development. So along with that, it is used to tracking changes in the source code and the distributed version control tool is used for source code management and it allows multiple developers to work together and it support non-linear development through its thousand of parallel branches. So suppose you are working on a, some project and uh, it's going on, right? And somebody came and somebody came with a better idea and he wants to implement something nice features in that. So instead of giving access to your own branch, what you will do, you will just create a separate branch and you, and it, you will provide access to him for that. So that instead of disturbing the main code, he can he can do his own implementation right and from the from the time you will create a branch whatever code you have that all code will be copied to the next branch so so like this we can say it is uh, it is going through a non-linear development right so we can have multiple parallel branch right so these are the three types of version control system we have so let's let's just start from the LVCS that is local version control system that that is a very simplest form of a, a version control system and it has a database that keep all the changes to the files under revision control so uh, for for a sake of example you can have RCS that is one of the most uh, common version control system in this so what what was the issue with that so whatever changes you are keeping in your local think like if it got crashed then all the changes do you have in your local that all will be lost right so then we have a uh, central cvcs that is central version control system right so in that uh, this system uh, was containing just one repository and each user get their own working copy okay so you need to commit to uh, reflecting your changes in the repository so for that you have to you you need to connect to the internet right so that you can get connected to the server and in this also you don't have any copy in the local you are just uh, doing the coding while connecting to this central server right <clears throat> and what was the issue in that suppose uh, you do not have copy in your local here also as well but uh, if uh, that central server will crash then all thing will be lost right so next came uh, this distributed version control system so uh, this distributed version control system contains multiple repository so each user has their own repository and working copy as well <clears throat> So just committing your changes will not give access to your changes. This is because 
a commit will reflect those changes in your local repository and you need to push them in order to make them visible to the central uh, repository so whatever code you, uh, you are editing and just making changes it will be to your local up to your local itself it will not reflect to other people until you will not push the code to the central repository right so now let's just start with the git workflow so basically it is divided into three states right that is a work directory second is staging area and third is git repository so working directory is basically uh, the, uh, the directory where you have initialized your git so it is the it is the path where you are doing your codes and all right and and once you have wrote the code you will do what you will stage all these codes right so it will do what it will stage the files and add snapshots of them to your staging area so once you have finished your coding you will push you will stage your code to the staging area and from there why we are uh, basically doing uh, putting this all code to the staging area because suppose like uh, if you want to just uh, uh, push uh, commit some part of the code like you want to commit uh, dot css and dot java files now you required so from the staging area you will just select all those file and you will commit those all file right so that is that is the main use case of this staging area so next comes this is a git repo that or you can say it is a git directory so it do what it perform a commit that stores the snapshot permanently to your git directory okay so whenever you will commit your code you will get the commit id and it it will store the snapshot of the code okay after one change and you can check out any version make changes and you can stage them and you can commit as well so once you will commit uh, it will it will get saved to your local repository and after that after you are getting to the local repository as i have discussed you have to push this all code to the repository so that it will be it will be visible to all the other uh, user right so that's it for today in the next session we will see how we can install git on our system so thanks for watching